Hello and welcome to Jonathan's Arrow, where we aim to shoot for the truth of the whole Word of God. In today's sermon, we are going to be looking at Sealed, Blessed Assurance, Salvation is Mine, in John chapter 10, verses 22 through 42. And seeing God's wisdom for us there and our protection, as well as the fact that we are eternally saved once saved. Once saved, always saved is a common term and very misunderstood. And it is my hope to bring out the truth of that matter in this sermon today. But before we do, let us go to the Lord in prayer and prepare our hearts for this sermon today. Dear Lord, my God and my Redeemer, I want to thank you and praise you for your glorious grace in my life and for your mercy and your truth. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would allow me to give the truth about being eternally saved once saved because there is a lot of misinformation out there about this and a lot of quarreling between churches and between factions and sections of Christianity who do or do not believe that you are eternally saved once saved. Let us understand the truth of this matter, Lord Jesus, and let us find out through the word of God the absolute fact of what you have said here. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would continue to help us in this study, lead and guide, and give us of your wisdom that we may truly understand what is the fact behind this. As I pray these things in your precious, holy, and righteous name, Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. We shall begin by reading John chapter 10, verses 22 through 42. And it was at Jerusalem the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him, and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, And I told you, and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me, but ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him, Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father, for which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, Thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God? If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand, and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized, and there he abode. And many resorted unto him, and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true. And many believed on him there. The meat of the message of sealed, blessed assurance, salvation is mine, can be found in verses 27 through 30 of John chapter 10. And it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Verse 27 states, There is a clear recognition between the real sheep and the true shepherd. 
John chapter 10, verse 1 through 5. So verse 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Those who are not of Jesus do not hear his voice and do not follow him. They do not listen to the word of God. In verses 1 through 5, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. The Bible is telling us here in verse number 27 of chapter 10, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Jesus is telling us that there is a clear recognition of the true sheep and the true shepherd against the false sheep and the false shepherd. There are false shepherds out there leading people astray, pastors of churches, priests and preachers and teachers who are telling you falsehoods about the Lord Jesus Christ. Follow Jesus rather. Jesus is the word of God and Jesus is the Bible. Read the Bible and follow his word. Verse 28 gives us the absolute, undoubtable assurance that I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. The opposition to assurance in the faith is doubt. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 65 through 67. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and a failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even! And at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning! For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. Do not rest in your hearts with a thought. That is old, it doesn't apply to me. The Bible tells us that if we forsake the way of the Lord Jesus Christ, if we forsake the faith of his word, we shall rest in doubt. And our rest in doubt shall be so great and terrible that we shall constantly say, Would God it were even when it's morning. And would God it were morning when it's even. We will fear and hate our days. We will hang in the balance of life. And we will not know what is coming next. Because we have doubted rather than feared God in the faith, rather than following God's faith. The fact of the matter is, is that a lot of people today live in this fear. They live in this doubt. They live in this hatred. They live in hanging in the balance. They live in wishing it was another day, wishing it was tomorrow, wishing it was later on, even wishing for death because they are entrenched in depression, entrenched in anxiety, entrenched in nervousness and fear because they do not have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and they do not believe the word of truth. Romans chapter 15 verse 4 says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. These verses in Deuteronomy were written to God's called out people of what would their lives be like if they turn from him. They apply to us. They apply to all time. Jesus the same today, yesterday and forever. Jesus Christ the same. God from the Old Testament and the same God from the New Testament. He will make good on his word. Have faith in him, or you will have nothing but terror in your life. The end of verse 28 and then verse 29 and 30 expound upon the two hands that seal us and keep us eternally. But there is a third. Verse 28 says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. 
neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So you cannot, you cannot lose your salvation once you are saved. The Bible says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. And then we see the two hands that keep us saved and sealed, that we cannot be plucked out of. It says, Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You shall not be plucked out of Jesus' hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So we cannot be plucked out of the hand of Jesus and out of the hand of the Father if we have been saved. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 1 through 14 tells us an expounding truth upon this. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that holy spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. We are sealed and kept in the Father's hands, the Son's hands, and the Holy Ghost's hands. Amen. Praise the Lord God. Once saved, always saved, regardless of what you are told by others. That is what Jesus tells us. In John chapter 10, verse 27 through 30, and in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, we see the truth that we are sealed by the hands of the Son, by the hands of the Father, and by the hands of the Holy Ghost. And we cannot be removed nor plucked out, and we cannot even pluck our own selves out of those hands. Amen and amen. We are sealed. Blessed assurance, salvation is mine. In John chapter 10, verses 27 through 30, and all of the book of John, we see continuing understanding from the Lord Jesus Christ that you cannot lose salvation once you are saved. You must first be born again. But once you are born again into that family of God, you cannot lose your status as a son of God. You cannot lose your status as a child of the King. That is the reality and the truth that the Lord Jesus Christ is telling us here. When he says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Believe the Lord Jesus Christ first and foremost, and reject the word that is given to you by any preacher, teacher, pastor, bishop, priest, or church who tells you otherwise. I do want to thank you for joining me in this sermon as we took a look at being saved forever, at eternal salvation, once saved, always saved, that we have that blessed assurance. 
salvation is mine. If you like this content, please like, share, comment down below, subscribe even, and tell me exactly what you think of this sermon today. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to oblige you with answers if I have them. But until next time, may you have a blessed day.